Now let's meet our lady who houses murderous subjects. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Dillis Wynn. Number two. My name is Dillis Wynn. Number three. My name is Dillis Wynn. And here is the spooky scenario of Dillis Wynn. Listen, if you will, it says, I, Dillis Wynn, run Murder, Inc. Let me say quickly and emphatically that this is not a gangster operation. Far from it. Murder, Inc. is the name of my bookstore. The first bookstore in New York City devoted exclusively to mystery books. Interestingly, while mystery stories sell very well, books about real crime usually don't sell well at all. My 3,000 titles of imagined villainry comprise one of the world's largest collections. I think that you'll be interested to know that I have one outrageous qualification for operating my bookstore. I was the roommate of a girl who later married none other than the sexy and swashbuckling, uh, swashbuckling mystery writer, Mr. M Mr. M Mickey Spillane. Oh, there it's Friday. Signed, Dillis Wynn. There you go, Dillis. Sexy and swashbuckling. It's right, right there. All right, now, well, let's uh, start the questioning, please, with Gene Rayburn. That's right, sexy Gene Rayburn. Number three, I assume that you got to know Mr. Spillane if she, he married your best friend, right? I did meet him, yes. Yes. Uh, was he sexy and always buckling and swash and all that? <laughs> He's huh? a very charming man. A charming man. Yes. Yeah. Uh, number two, uh, where is your bookstore in New York City? It's on 87th Street between West End and Broadway on the north side of the street. <laughs> number one, what, uh, what sells real well? What's your best-selling book? Probably Nicholas Freeling, and I would say the one that's out of print in this country, Valparaiso. Hmm. Number two, uh, uh, it says that you have books also on real crime, and have you read a great many of the books in your shop? Are you kind of an authority on mystery books? And well, not a hundred percent. I like mystery stories. Uh, frankly, because I sell them and I have to keep up to date with them, I get a little tired of them. Yeah. And I don't particularly like books about real crime because I don't particularly like real crime. <laughs> 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 All right, let's go to Peggy. Number two, do you know the real name of John Le Carre? Yes. What um, is it? Oh, I know it, of course, and it immediately goes out of my head. It's an English name. Uh, number one, uh, uh, do you, uh, who wrote the murder about Roger Ackroyd? Agatha Christie. Thank you. Number three, what do these people have in common? Roger West, the Toff, and the Baron. They're all written by John Creasy. Thank you. Uh, um, uh, who, number two, whose who's, uh, uh, detective is, insp is Inspector Marriott? Okay, number one, Dick Francis uh, writes of a certain background in his books. What is it? Do you know? Horseback racing. Thank you. Number three, whose detective is Miss Marple? Agatha Christie. Number two, what had just happened to Inspector Vandervalk in the last book? Well, he met with another inspector from another book. And what happened? <laughs> huh? None of your books. Okay, <laughs> number one, number one, uh, uh, whose detective is Sam Spade? Uh, Dashiell Hammett. Thank you. Number three, what's the That's perfect. So it's Peggy's over there like a district attorney. I don't know how Sam Spade, eh? All right, we're going to go to Alan Alde. How do you like that there, Alan? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, number one, uh, Mickey Spillane's wife was uh, recently uh, in the newspapers uh, in connection with one of uh, Mr. Spillane's books. And what was the connection? She was on the cover. I see. Uh, number, uh, number three... Oh, who, who, uh, who's the uh, author of the uh, May Gray stories? Who? Have I got the... Have I Inspector Megray. Inspector Megray. Oh, uh, Inspector Megray is your Simenon. Thank you. Uh, n uh, number one, um, do you get... Uh, often I read that uh, people in the high government circles uh, read uh, and enjoy mystery stories. Do, have you had any interesting people uh, come into your shop? Mostly authors looking for their own works. <laughs> <laughs> That's typical. All right, Kitty. Number three, did you get a nice husband, too? No. Oh, don't <laughs> worry, oh, you're terrible. Come. That's terrible. No, she has a husband. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number one, did you meet this uh, lady who found Mr. Spillane in college? Yes. 
Where was that? Pembroke College. I see. Number two, uh, do you make money in your bookshop? It's not a notoriously lucrative enterprise, is it? Well, I've only been in business a few months, so it's a little hard to tell, but I think I will. Oh. Number three, uh, have you only been in business a few months? Yes, since June. What made you do this? Well, I used to work in the public library in England, and there's such a following for mystery stories, I decided that if ever I opened my own bookstore, that would be it. I see. Number one, do these authors who come in, if they don't find their own books, are they enraged and do they berate you? No, usually they ask me to go on a search for them. Ah. <laughs> and there we go. It is now ballot marking time. Everybody's going to mark their ballot according to what they think, whether it's number one or number two or number three. Has everybody got a ballot <clears throat> set then? All right, Gene, if you'll start, please. Well... It was a choice between one and three. They were terrific. Number two gave me the impression that she had memorized all the material a little bit. Uh, she did her homework well, but, uh, and just, I went with number one. She had that quiet authority about her. All righty, we got a one, Sean. Peg, how are you going to go? Well, number three was really very good, but number two didn't know Vandervoort got killed in the last book. I was never so astonished. I mean, the good guy. I think it's number one because I know a fellow mystery story person when I see her. I want to tell you, you asked some tough questions, Alan. Oh, easy. Uh, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm torn between uh, uh, one and three, but I think a three, something about the way number three said I worked in a library and wanted to, well, it reminds me of a girl I know who wanted to work in a library because she liked books. She just seemed to like books. Oh, right. You got a three. And, and I, I voted for three. Three and a pair of ones. And Kitty, how are well, you Well, I voted for number one for a very simple reason. From what I know about authors, they're always going into the bookshop to look for their own books. And that's the real one. Well, it's almost a total thing. Alan's the holdout. We'll find out. The votes are in. Will the real Dillis win? Please stand up. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Oh, gee, that's such a specialized field. Very tough to fake on. Number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Kathleen Moore. I work for Rankin Bass, and we make children's animated television programs. Oh, sure. <laughs> Good to have you here. And number three, tell us about yourself. My name is June Keir, and I work for the British Consulate. Ah. Phyllis, uh, are you like uh, uh, a chef in a restaurant who doesn't really like to eat? Do you, do you like them. mystery stories? I love them. I really love them. And this is how you got into it, huh? Yeah. Sort of an offspring of a hobby. Well, it was either sell them or commit one. I, you know, I had that option. <laughs> and I chose to sell them. Oh, well, we're glad we have such a shop in New York. And thank you thank very you. much, Dillis. And thank you, ladies, for being with us here on To Tell the Truth. Uh,